run. <laughs> okay, so we're here at uh, Valley View Community Church with Jason Tripp, who's pastor of Valley View Community Church, and Steve Goodry, pastor of Valley Pentecostal Church. And we're here to talk about Elevate Sudbury. So you guys are kind of like the driving force behind at least this area of it. Yeah. What can you tell us about Elevate Sudbury? Yeah, well, maybe I'll just tell you a little bit about uh, the vision first and kind of the backstory of how Elevate came to be. Uh, for the last uh, nine years, uh, churches have been uh, gathering together this time of year for an event called uh, Celebrate, or Celebrate Jesus. And that uh, took place in uh, Bell Park Amphitheater. It was chances for churches to, uh, to get together and to enjoy service together. And uh, both Steve and I have been very involved with that over the years. And uh, this year, uh, myself and some other leaders, uh, we were just thinking, well, what's, what's next for this particular venture? And we thought, well, coming together for a worship service, that's good, that's great, we can do that. But uh, let's get together, let's actually do some community service projects. Let's roll up our sleeves, work together to make our neighborhoods better places to live. And so that's really what Elevate Weekend's about. It's about uh, the Christian community as well as any volunteers coming together just to identify tangible need in the community and then to uh, get her done. So this has been going on in some aspect for about nine years, you said? Yeah, it's probably been going on for about nine years, but uh, I think it was more just trying to bring the churches together. You know, we all have our different, uh, you know, different parts or forms of the way that we do church or, or we would go, uh, there's common denominator, which is Christ, but but in the center fact, it's been more almost self-centered, you know, just getting us together. And <laughs> so we've all, in our own ways, have wanted to do kind of uh, be involved in our communities and do what we needed to do in our communities. And so Elevate just launches us into getting outside of our four you know, walls of our churches and getting into our communities and uh, being a part of our communities and trying to really encourage other people. Hey, these are our communities. Let's get in there. Let's let's look after them. Let's keep them clean. Let's have some active uh, things that we do. And a large portion of the pastors uh, involved in Celebrate have a passion for communities. So when uh, Jason and the rest of the guys kind of came up with this whole idea of, you know, hey, let's incorporate doing something back into the communities. Uh, the response was phenomenal. Uh, we had a luncheon where we just, uh, Jason organized a luncheon where we all got together with all these pastors across the whole city, not just the valley, but across the whole city, and uh, really launched this off that each ward uh, is being represented, you know, to do something in the community, and hopefully even larger than just on this Saturday coming up. But this will keep flowing day by day, you know, and different activities that are going to happen. How did you evolve from celebrate to evolve? Is it, because obviously there's, there's got to be some feeling that this is a different year. Mm -hmm. There's a transition. This mm -hmm. is different than the previous eight. It's not the ninth. <clears throat> well, this is the, this is the 10th celebrate. anniversary of okay. celebrate. Okay. And, okay. and, you know, I was officially given kind of the, you take the reins and lead this and I said, they don't okay, regret that, do they? <laughs> yeah, uh, we'll find out. Actually. Yeah. But I said, yeah, I'll do it under two conditions. And my two conditions up front were, let's invite every church across the city, regardless of name on the church, denomination. Let's just make this open, a, it, up. open yeah. it up. Open it up. Because we're, we're doing work in our city. Let's put our differences aside. And let's just be about what Jesus said we should be about, loving God and loving our neighbor. It's as simple as that. And so that was the first uh, stipulation. The second condition was, Let's still have a worship component to the weekend, but let's add this community service element so it can be uh, more holistic. Like let's let's come together and worship God, but let's, let's spend a, a day just loving our neighbors, identifying community needs, no strings attached, and inviting everybody who wants to participate in that. And so, that's been very well received. So really, it's not a I hate to say religious, it's, but it's not a religious event as much as a community event. But then, how do you separate? <clears throat> <clears throat> spiritualism well, and community like it's, it's well I guess the biggest thing that you're kind of hitting on is uh, both Jason and I don't want to be known as religious because that's just a format we want to be known as Christ-like and Christ was always out into the communities doing things religion is rules and regulations that 
we seem to put on people to make them do stuff. And you're gonna be Christ-like without knowing. It. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And that's, I guess, the whole part that you know, the whole thing is caring for one another and and helping one another. Uh, typically, uh, you know, and I can speak to this, and and I think Jason will kind of maybe bring the whole picture together, but. Uh, for our ward, Ward 6, we're going to be doing the helping out over at the skate park. And uh, so we have multiple churches that are going to be coming together. And uh, we're going to be planting some trees. And we're going to be painting the ball diamond, the outfield fence, and doing that. Well, the whole cool thing about that is, like, we know how many people in our community are playing baseball. Mixed ball, t-ball, all that stuff. So we're helping to do that kind of thing. So we're seeding into those people to say, hey, we got a place in our valley, you know, uh, to go do sports, safe place, have fun, and everything else like that. We're putting in the trees because the skate park was these kids all of a sudden had this great idea. We'd like to have a skate park in a safe place. They made all the, you know, these kids are really working hard to put this together. They went after, the, you know, the politician kind of people, the council, and said, we want something someplace. And, they put all the, the work to it. Now we're just saying, hey, we want to help you. We want to, we want to show you that great idea, kids. Great job to do. And I think that's just a common thing that we would love to see all of us do. Because we've got great people in all of our wards and in the whole community. And if we all do a little bit in our communities, our communities get better. I can always, uh, I guess maybe the way to answer your question was when I first came uh, which is crazy, it's nine years now, you know, it's gone so quickly. Um, when I first came nine years ago to the Valley, um, the board that brought me in asked me this question. He said, what do you want the relationship between Valley Pentecostal Church with the community? And I said, I, this is my heartbeat, is that literally, if something ever went wrong at Valley Pentecostal Church that we financially could not keep it open, we would make such an impact in the community that the community would say, we got to keep this church open. Yeah, that's and that's, that was my heartbeat. And that's why I have no problem seating in or jumping on board to elevate. Because to me, we're giving back to the community, not just taking from the community, but giving to the community. Because both of us are not in any, uh, Jason and myself, we're on the same page. We want to give to our community, we want to be a part of it, but I know there's lots of other service groups, there's other good people in the community that want to give. So if we can have a venue where they can start doing that, I think it can just mushroom to be even more. Mm -hmm. yeah. and I guess the interesting thing is, if you take a look at it, you know, why are you doing this, go back nine years and take a look at the size of your congregation nine years ago and today, everybody knows the contributions that the Valley Pentecostal Church has made to the community through your uh, Valley East days and, and all this kind of stuff. But I mean, your congregation hasn't tripled. No, nope. it, it's not like your <laughs> your, your marketing <laughs> has filled nope. the church. It's it's giving purpose and meaning to the people who belong to that yeah. group. And that that's a huge point. Like some people have asked me, what's the catch? I mean, people think there's a, a yeah. religious string attached. There is no string no. attached. I mean, and we take our marching orders from Jesus, and the word elevate actually came from a passage in Scripture that just talks about, as, as a church, we need to be not looking out for our own interests, we need to be looking out for the interests of others, just as Jesus has modeled and empowered us to do. He was always uh, looking out for the least of these around him. And as followers of Jesus, not people first and foremost affiliated with the church or religion, but followers of Jesus, our posture towards others should be imitative of Christ. And so that's where we got the word elevate from. You know, we want to elevate those around us in our community by having a posture of humility and service with no strings attached. And so that's, that's really the, the backstory and the kind of the vision and the heartbeat for Elevate this year. I, I guess when you take a look at where is this going to go, I mean, we'll talk about what's happening this weekend too, but, but this is more about a movement than it is about an event. Yeah, I, I like that word movement. Uh, it is. It's, yeah. It's yeah. a movement. It's, it's it's a it's a trend that you're trying yeah. to like. It's a it's a philosophy of community. It's a community philosophy that you're trying. Now that's happened. Like that, we've had that before. Yeah. Like I've lived here since 1974. Oh. Mm -hmm. You've seen it in your nine years. You've been oh yeah. yeah. But why does it kind of peter out after a while? Like we've always had these elevated moments of community and 
we're down. Now we're back up. Or we're down. Is that? I think sometimes it becomes. Uh, I think it becomes. There needs to be a project. You know what I mean? Yeah, like uh, Howard Johnson. That that was something that everybody could put their teeth into for our community. We wanted a place where all of our families and kids could come and exercise and swim and okay. have fellowship and get together with each other. Mm -hmm. So there was a common cause, and, you know, something that we could do. And I think Elevate just kind of does that because we, we've started here on Saturday just asking, okay, where can we help? Well, we're going to put some trees in, uh, you know, at the skateboard park. There's other places we could do stuff. And hopefully that ripple effect will start happening you know, Jason's going to be helping to do the the uh, Langley, trail, Langley you know, here, yeah. the trail out here, and, and and doing that kind of thing. So we got some people that kind of said that, and just like you were saying, it's become bigger, I think, than even Saturday, which is really cool for us. I ended up getting a phone call um, from somebody in in the health uh, system that turned around and said, "Listen, we're looking that we would like to have a community garden uh, at a location to help students." But we, we're not ready for Saturday. Would you be interested in letting, ever, you know, letting this, this whole uh, program that you're kind of putting together work later on in the summer? And that we could get uh, different people with maybe more maturity in gardening to help these students know how to do a garden and maybe do a community garden or something like that. And so right away I said, well, let me check with the guys that are doing it. But if they don't do it, we'll do it as a church. And, I, you know, and then talking to Jason saying, yeah, that's the heart we want to do. And then he's sharing with me today that, you know, the trail that they're doing, they're not going to just do it Saturday and say, okay, we did our good deed for the week and walked away. They're taking ownership. And, and I guess that's kind of the thing. Taking ownership in our community. And whatever ward you're in, take it. But then overall, the whole city. Yeah. One, one, of my, one of our colleagues in a different area of town used the word spark. He said, this is really the spark that the churches in our neighborhood and even the counselor and some others were looking for something to ignite some sort of rhythm. And you, and you use the word movement. I think that's a good word, Bob. I mean, we want this to be organic. We don't want it to be overly programmatic. Uh, we just want to be, keep our eyes and ears open to the cares and the concerns around us in our neighborhood. And that's something that we should be doing 24-7. And so if, if Elevate Weekend can help stimulate some of that or can be a spark all over Greater Sudbury, then it's achieved its purpose. And certainly we want to celebrate what's going to be happening this upcoming weekend. But if it's just an annual event or a program, that's not really what we're shooting for. We're shooting for a, a posture, a, sort of a rhythm of life that we're instilling in people in our community. It really, it's, it's hard to be able to, to point to signs that you've been successful. <laughs> because it would be as if, when you do the Langley Park, if you could somehow have a camera on the entire trail, and the moment that you see somebody coming by, picking up a piece of garbage, yeah. And carrying it through the trail and throwing it away in, in the garbage container, then you've known that that elevation stayed there. Yeah. So when you're talking about spark and you're talking about getting to a different level, I, I don't know. I like the elevate. I don't want to say I don't like celebrate, but elevate is once you get to a new level, you don't have deflate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now it's like we're all moving toward a higher level. And that elevate is okay. We're bringing it up to a new standard. Now, keeping that standard up is not the responsibility of the churches. No, it's the responsibility of the community, of which the churches should of be an active church. part. Yeah. And so that's why we said this is not simply a church initiative. The churches are taking the lead on elevate. But that's why we said let's connect with our community action networks. Let's connect with our counselors. Let's open it up to anybody who has a heart for making our community and neighborhood a better place to live. And let's do it together because we're all responsible for making our neighborhood a better place to live. And really, when you take away the churches, when you take away the church groups, um, by definition, they're a community. Exactly. But so is the school. Exactly. School community. That's we right. all talk about school community. Well, so, I mean, you're talking about your football team could take on a project. Exactly. Exactly. And I just think what ends up happening exactly what you're saying, Bob, is uh, when, you know, like... You know, I go back to the project that, that we're involved in. Now there's going to be uh, older people that we might not see on a skateboard in that park yep. using it. But they're definitely going to know those kids are there. Mm -hmm. And they're, those kids hopefully will realize those older people are not saying, hey, shut this down, we don't want a skateboard, we don't want all these kids hanging out here and doing stuff like that. 
they're going to be going, hey, we got them a safe place and a place to hang out. The other factor is, is that those kids that are involved in doing this are going to hopefully take ownership and they're not going to be graffitiing, uh, you know, the ramps and everything else like that. They're going to respect it. And just like you were saying, garbage there, we're going to have a garbage bin or whatever set up, that they're going to put the garbage in there instead of not. Because this is a part of them. They've taken ownership in it. And I think that's the biggest thing. And our world really has revolved about everybody deserves this, right? You know, I deserve this. And there should be somebody to pick up the garbage behind me because we're, I did this, we're right? Entitled to we're entitled. Yes, Entitlement yes. is such an unbelievable, uh, you know, kind of a spirit over a lot of us. When we start shifting those type of things, and, and truly, I, I really believe, you know, we have the mindset that the churches are in our communities really, you know, to, to bring rules or regulations. No, it's really just to step into our communities and, and hopefully bring a positive part that everybody catches on. But so can schools and so can other groups. We can all do that. And if we all do that, we have a better community. If somebody comes into the valley or comes into the bigger, broad picture of Sudbury, but comes into the valley and, and says, wow, I, I want to live out here. That's, yeah. I, I want to be a part of this because it is just a bigger community within the smaller communities of different interests that people have. And then all of a sudden they're going like, wow, you know, I was in the park and somebody came up and talked to me, yeah. you know, and like, man, I can't believe the park. I, I, I watch these people sit, you know, and all of a sudden they're picking up the yeah. garbage behind themselves because they feel it's ours. Yeah. It's ours. And, and I think that's the only way that happens. Like that skate park, if it's just put up, the kids that use it are going to like it, but nobody else is going to be connected to it. Same thing with the walking park, you know, like the walking trail. You do, you know, the people that use the trail, use the trail. But everybody else, they don't even know it exists. But you go and clean it a bit, now you're telling people, hey, we got an awesome trail in the valley. You know, it's really cool. And they might even say, hey, we should try it. And get out there and go for a walk, yeah. which is going to increase, you know, their health, you know, and cause their health to be better. I think that's, you're getting into this whole area of awareness, too. And... Uh, like the, the sprucing up the skateboard park is is one thing, but I mean I don't tell you. I mean that whole park area, the playground, oh, the yeah. tennis court, it's, it's it's brutal. Oh yeah. But it, it's kind of like the beginning of getting. Let's take a skateboard. piece of the pie, right? Let's start, but we got a whole pie to do. Yeah. yeah. And and I, I'm sure there's going to be some critics. So there obviously have been some critics. You know, the kids are going to tear down those trees, and I, I hope that the answer is we'll go and put another one up. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. If, we, if one gets torn down or broke, yeah. we're just not going to leave it there. We'll put another one up. Yeah. And, you, and you put your finger on a good point. When we're overly critical or fearful of something happening, that can paralyze us from doing anything. We can find any excuse for not doing something. Yeah, I mean, we just justify ourselves for being apathetic to the needs in our community. I'm not going to get involved with the church. I've got all the trouble the churches are getting. Yeah. And we're going to get involved with politics. I'm not going to get sure. yeah. involved in politics. Everybody in, that's in politics is uh, corrupt. And that okay. might be even an answer to your other question where you're saying, like, why do we climax, you know, all of a sudden we've got something like, you know, like our, our pool and everything else like that. Everybody jumped on board at one time to do that. Um, not everybody, but a, a large core. And then now all of a sudden, you know, certain things that we want to do, there's just no interest. Nobody wants to get involved. Nobody wants to do Until it. Until they try to take it away from you. Except, exactly. <laughs> then all of a sudden you jump into it. So isn't it cool if we can just keep having that ownership and, and not not that you won't share. It's kind of like uh, I've always laughed about, you know, uh, people say, well, clicks aren't good. Uh, but realistically, clicks are a part of life. We all have our groups that, that we're with. Clicks become bad when they become nobody can enter your click. Mm -hmm. Clicks are, are protective. The close they, they, they get you to know when they become a closed click, that's when the problem happens. And communities can become closed clicks. Because what ends up happening is we've got our group, and we're all happy, and we don't want anybody else in. And uh, But when we leave it open, then there has to be that invitation. And I think that invitation is like seeing people that may never use that skateboard park or walk on that trail, but have ownership to say, we want it in our community for people in our community that we may never use it. And the problem with our world today in a lot of cases is, what am I getting out of it? Just like Jason said, what's in it for me? Well, I'm not going to use that park. Why do I need to go and help do that? I'm not going to use the pool. I'm not going to do, 
you know, I'm not going to use the ball field. Why should I go out there and paint the posts on the outfield of the ball field? I, I'm not, I'm not going to use that. Well, I was thinking, I wanted to see you on a skateboard, Steve. Come yeah, on. you know what I mean? <laughs> so <laughs> so that, that whole mindset. <clears throat> so I think when you start looking beyond yourself and saying, you know what, this is our community. This is, this is our valley. This is who we are, you know, and we want to look after every age bracket that we can and different things that we can do. And isn't it kind of cool, like, I, and I guess this is my, my whole desire to see, is that those young guys that are going to be skateboarding and young girls that are going to be skateboarding would be there and come alongside me and somebody else planting a tree. Maybe we can tell them, you know, if you put some bone meal in there, that helps the roots, and if you get some water. So we're educating them, in a, and being a teacher yourself, former teacher, you know the best is on hands teaching than just out of a textbook. Okay. And so now we're showing him that someday he's going to have his own backyard and he's going to want to put a tree in his backyard. He's going to go, I remember when those guys came over here, you know, and did it. And who knows, maybe one of those 60 or 50 or whatever year old might be able to get on a skateboard <laughs> and go down there and those young guys are just going to look and go like, Whoa, you know? <laughs> I mean, the ambulance attack. <laughs> I, I, I think that I think the thing that, that uh, discourages a lot of people is that they, they don't understand that sometimes uh, a seed takes a long time to yep. break ground. Sure. And, and uh, you know, when, you're, when you relate to teaching and you relate to, well, are these kids going to start showing uh, the results? It may not be until they're 20 years old oh, yeah. that they actually say, I'm doing this. And I think it had a lot to do with uh, that skateboard park. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. That, that really is that seed analogy is a good one for Elevate. Because yeah. we see this Elevate year one as just being a seed. And you said, you know, it'd be nice to be able to uh, have some specific measurement tools to gauge success. Well, we've been talking in our church, and I'm sure Steve has as well. Like, how do we define success in a, in a church, per se? And historically, it's been you know, butts and seats and budgets and buildings, but we're saying no. Are we adding value to our community? Like Steve said, if, if, we're, making, if we're not making our community a better place to live, we are failing as a church That's community. Right. And so we're just going to go plant a seed, and it might take years to germinate and grow. But uh, that, that would hopefully should keep us motivated to add a little more water to the seeds year by year by year and, and just step back and, and see what happens. And not get discouraged that they don't mm -hmm. all take root. Absolutely. Well, yeah. I mean, both, both Jason and I probably realize our whole congregations aren't coming up to elevate. That's sad for yeah, us. But, but you're not. But we're hitting, we're hitting a percentage, and hopefully that percentage is that seed that will germinate into the rest. That the next time we do elevate, we double our numbers because people have grown into that heart of giving and, and helping others. Now we always have people who away on vacation, people working or whatever. But it's the heartbeat that has to change. And if you can start with a few, you can start making that change. And it's the willingness, like you said, how many times do we put a seed in? I, I remember, you know, my grandkids put a seed in the ground, they come out the next day to see the plant. <laughs> and it, it's not there. And that'll go for maybe four, maybe three, four days. Then they want to dig up the dirt to get to the seed to make sure it's still there. Yeah. And a lot of times what we do is we, you know, like elevate. We'll, we'll seed into a community and do something like that. And if we don't see a response right away, we sometimes dig it up, which just ends up killing it. Mm -hmm. Instead of just be patient, wait, it's going to come. And you have to nurture it, right? You still got to water it even though you don't see it. You still got to pull the weeds out. And just like you were saying, hopefully somebody is not going to go and say, you know, oh, those kids are going to just break the trees that you're putting in there. Oh, well, we're not going to plant any more trees. No, hopefully we're going to go, hey, we put 20 trees in, they broke one. We got 19 that are up. Yeah. So let's put one in. We did really well, you know, and hopefully those young guys. And I guess this is what I've found in all my, you know, my years of coaching and different things like that. If they take ownership, they'll police it. And that's the greatest thing. Because what are we going to do? Put a guard on, on the skate park that nobody graffitis it? You know, the whole reality. But if the kids are there and somebody shows up, the word gets around school, it gets around everywhere else and finds out who it is. And next time they just go, you know, hey, that's our skateboard park. You know, keep your mitts off of it. Yeah, it's, and if a community does that, it's our community. Right? It's our community. We want it to, to go this way. We want people to feel safe and have fun and enjoy themselves and know that they're cared about. And 
it's got to start someplace, and it has already, right? Yeah. We've got a lot of great things in the valley yeah. because groups or individuals had a vision and said, you know what, let's do this. Yeah. It, it, <coughs> I think when, when you take a look at, at some of the projects and some of the things that have gone on, they've been great. Uh, a lot of work. A lot of work to organize these things. It, it's just, it's just huge. Uh, and to get the same people to come out and continue year after year, we're starting to find now that the people are just, uh, they're getting burned out and there's nobody to take their place. I, I know I've talked to a few people and I've explained back when, you know, in the 60s and 70s and 80s when, when you were a young parent, <clears throat> it was your turn to look after the playground mm -hmm. when your kids were using it. And there were enough people that when your kids stopped using the playground, there were other kids coming in to use the playground and their parents came yep. in. Mm -hmm. So you had nice playground associations. There. Now we're getting into, they're, they're using these facilities not as their core entertainment facility, but it's when they need it, they're using it, but, but they don't have enough energy to put all of their energy to keep it going. So now it's like we're into this on demand. It's, it's like you know, we'll do this program, we could do the program on radio, but I'm finding putting them on video means it's there when people want it. Now, how many people are going to come and get it? Who knows, but it's there. Yeah. And, as, and so when you're getting into Elevate and you're getting into all the projects, I always look at it from the point of view that if you're doing something that adds value to your community, you've changed your community. You can't devalue that. So you've already elevated your community. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter if it's picking up that one little piece of paper. You've, Absolutely. You, you've made the community very very minutely, but you've increased the value. Yeah. So whether you have these big events or not, that, that increases the value a little bit more. But every but all these the, the people in your congregation that are not coming out to help, it doesn't mean that they're not changed. Absolutely. And they're not. probably that's changed. Like, absolutely. That's huge. Because, I mean, there's joy in just serving. I mean, when people, they're skeptical of it until they get out and actually do it. It's like, wow, I was trying to fill a need here for somebody else, but I received something at the same time. Yeah. Well, there's, there's joy from being part of the group that's doing it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They don't have exactly. to be there. They can say, I'm part of that group. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's even the comment that came back, and I don't know if Jason's had this happen, but, you know, uh, Father Michael from St. Kevin's, you know, he turns around, he says, I'm going to be there. And he says, it's going to be really cool to see you, Steve. Because we may cross paths where he does a funeral and it's somebody that I'm connected to and I'm in his parish, you know, at the funeral. And that's as close as we so get. You go into doors? You go into each other's doors? Oh, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we, I do anyways, right? I do anyways, and I know that, you know. But that kind of, that kind of situation where, you know, we're looking forward to seeing each other. Yeah. And like his comment to me was, he says, this would be really cool, Steve, for uh, both of you know his parish and our church to come together and, and work, let alone what we're even doing by for the kids, just the fact that church to church. And I think that's why Celebrate went the way it did for a period of time, because the churches had to get used to getting ready for this, you know, working together and, and not saying, well, well, I want all the credit, or I want it. That some of those things had to be molded out, and it's sad to say, but it had to be, you know, put together. To I really believe it was the right time and the the right guys to to launch this. That you know, all of a sudden we were ready to do that, and I think our communities have to get to that point too. And I think our world has become so busy, Bob. Um, these young couples with a couple of kids are both working everything else like that, they're exhausted by the time they get home. They can barely keep their grass cut at their home, let alone, you know, maybe jump on something like that. And then even the financial obligations that are on them and everything. But if they could do just a little thing, and that's why I really agree with you, it doesn't have to be a major big thing. And I think the other thing is, you know, with Elevate, we didn't just come in, uh, and I really like where Jason and the committee went with this, they didn't just come in and say, Oh, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. They asked the communities or the wards that they were at, what can we do for you? And I think that changes it too. Instead of coming in kind of like a dictatorship and say, hey, I got the answer for you. This is what we're going to do. They said, what can we do for you? A servant's heart, right? And, and I really believe as we start getting that, more people, and, and I mean, it has to get to a point where, 
you know, people that are in need or, you know, parts that need to be done or whatever can, can turn around and have some place maybe to contact, you know, through, uh, through your Facebook or whatever and say, this is kind of a need. Can we get a group of people together to kind of help these people out? And, I mean, we know what it's like, man, I, we get calls in our own churches and that's that community church thing where I get seniors that no longer can do something that come to me and say, Pastor, is there anybody that can cut my lawn or shovel my